don't know if this guy is a subscriber to me or not, but John Quinn. Hi, John. New favorite person. Okay, maybe not my very favorite person. I don't, you know, I used to have favorite people. I used to, oh, you're one of my favorite people. Um, I don't do that anymore. I don't have favorite people anymore. Um, because people aren't always what they seem. That's, that's what I, that's what I came to finally realize from the whole experience. Um, this, this is a spin-off video from the video I just made called, da 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 but, laying the guilt on, guilt trip on, Jesus died for you. This is a spin-off video. I'm responding to, um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I was... John Quinn, um, you know, if I could print his comments out and put them aside and read them every now and then, whenever I'm feeling kind of down, I would, because they're hysterical. This is um, his comment about the guy that was sick that I took care of in my home. I say two, three years, but really it was about two years, because the first year he wasn't sick. He was just staying in my home cat sitting. At least that's what he called it. And I assumed he, because this started happening right after he found out that I was in love with him, I assumed that um, it was in response to that and he was showing interest back. So he was coming over and staying and sleeping on my couch. You know, and it was great, you know, being, being that I had just come through a marriage and, and I had never lived on my own before and I was afraid of being alone. It was quite nice for me to have somebody to come home to still, and somebody that I, that I was in love with. It was really nice having all this time with this man that I had, I had, I imagined he was a certain way from, from how he came across in public because, well, he was an actor, and I found out much later that he didn't really stop acting when he climbed off the stage. He had his persona that he put on and he presented to the world this is who I am but was he really that person I fell in love with this persona that he put out that, oh he was so sweet he had this spirit I could just see the, the the light in his eyes that reflected the good man inside and that's who I you know I thought he was and anyway so um yeah so he stayed with me he got sick I cared for him for two years and thought he was my friend thought he thought at least he was my friend you know I, I was helping somebody that cared for me and 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 of course I would care for him I never really questioned the fact that none of his other friends volunteered for the job nobody was lining up to offer him their assistance and maybe that should have been a huge clue that maybe there was a reason nobody else put themselves out there and offered him all that but anyway so I'm, in my last video, I'm, I'm, and I, and I do, I do stand by what I say in the last video. I did, in fact, have hopes of a, of a long-lasting friendship with this man I cared for, and thought cared for me. I thought that he, him, stayed in my home and me caring for him, that that was going to cause us to grow closer as friends, and that he would value my friendship, and that. You know, maybe if I were in need someday, or if I was, you know, in trouble someday, that he would be there to support me and care, show some caring in return. That's that's the kind of stuff I hoped, and I do really stand by the the, thing, the belief that having an expectation for giving is going to cause you to hurt in the end. People, John, well, I'm going to just read what John says because his his comments are awesome. <laughs> his comments made me smile big time. So I'm just going to read what he says under this other video I made. Don't try to rationalize his fucked up behavior, D. You had every right to expect a friend in this jerk. For the most part, people ain't shit. Rarely do they, do they appreciate what you do. You could have saved this joker's life, and he still would have shit on you. Now what you should have done was stuck a thermometer up his ass and kicked his sorry, ungrateful, no good butt out of your crib, sick or no sick. I see why you surround yourself with animals. I wrote him back. 
I actually did save this guy's life several times. I got him to the hospital when he was disorientated. It was not an easy task because he didn't, being disorientated, know he was in trouble. I'd have to call his best friend to help me get him there. And one time I had to call the police to get him there. We found out later, toward the end of his illness, that when he is not given help at the disorientated stage, coma happens next. So yes, I saved this joker's life several times. And oh, I wanted to correct something in my last video. I said that I sat by his side three times. During three hospital stays, I sat by his side. It was actually six. Six hospital stays in three years. No, I'm sorry. Three... Ugh, too many numbers. Six hospital stays in two years. One of them was over a month long. Luckily, the hospital was close to my house, so it wasn't a huge deal, but... You know, every day I'd go there. Every day I I bring him things, or we'd play Battleship or whatever, and I'd be I tried to be a companion to him. And I remember when he was getting better after that one month long stay. That was the coma, I believe. Um, no, no, no. I don't think the coma was a month. Um, the coma was the last hospital stay. Um, but anyway, no, it was the coma though where he was getting better, and and this was when we thought he was going to die, and he was in the ICU. And he said, and I said something about going, and he says, well, I don't really care if you stay or go. Yeah, that was a hurtful thing to say. So anyway, so I, I told John that, um, actually, I did save this guy's life several times. He writes, and that's the thanks you got? I wouldn't have given this ass a pass saying that you tried to bribe friendship out of him. From what you say, he owed you more than just friendship. He owed you his life. You know, and I felt like a bad person. They, they, both he and his friends went out of their way to make me feel like a very bad person because that's exactly the attitude I had after this was all said and done. I felt like, yeah, you know, you're still alive, you're walking around because I was there for you. You know, people who marry, who are married to somebody who gets sick and they go through an illness with somebody who is sick, but that's their spouse. I wasn't even his girlfriend. There was no relationship like that. I was just a friend helping him. I could have walked any time. I put myself through what was a really hard, depressing, horrific thing. And I was depressed at the time from going through the end of my marriage and this crushing, the last crushing several years of my marriage being with a man who pretended to be impotent, who, who couldn't tell me that he loved me. He said, I don't know if I asked him and finally toward the end said, I don't think I really loved you. I think people just expected me to marry you. Anyway, so I was already depressed and then I had, I got to endure two years of caring for somebody who was sick who a lot of times treated me like shit because deep down inside this man didn't care for me he didn't like me he had contempt for me this man had contempt for me deep down inside but he pretended to be my friend and so lots of times when being a very sick person he couldn't always shine it on the contempt would show through. The sarcasm would enter his voice, and he would say some really hurtful things. And I would always come up with an excuse for him. Oh, he's sick. He's in a, you know, he's sick. I should have paid more attention to, and, and I really should have kicked his sorry ass to the curb. He, he did not deserve the caring that I gave. He did not deserve the kindness that I gave. And that's the point of what I'm trying to say in my video, is there's a lot of I should-haves. And I, I, you know, I'm, I'm not totally blaming myself because of the fact that I had expectations. I'm saying that I was wrong to have expectations when I gave caring to somebody. I shouldn't have had expectations. And that's what they really wanted me to 
that's that's the message I got from him and his friends was, well, you know, you did you did have expectations, Diane. You you you, you know, and eventually I came to see, yeah, that's true. I did. I had I put I put invisible chains on this man. And that 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 wasn't that wasn't good. He never he never signed up for that. He never agreed. He never said that we were friends. In fact, I did actually ask him at one point or refer to him as a friend at one point and he said he didn't like the F word. Don't use the F word. That was another huge clue that maybe, ooh, you know, maybe he's not a friend. Maybe maybe you should think twice before you dedicate so much of your time and caring to this person who can't even call, you know, he never introduced me ever to any of his friends. This is my friend Diane. He never introduced me as his friend. When he got better and he started going back to theater and he started going, you know, to work at the theater and being in plays, he never invited me along. He never, um, there was parties, Christmas parties, and I was the driver. I, I would take him to the party. I would take him home. But during the party, he never was near me. He never would go anywhere near me. He was like a completely, we were completely separate entities and I'd be in this party where I knew nobody or next to nobody. He knew everybody or pretty much everybody. Never introduced me to people. Never said, hey, this is my friend Diane. You know, she's been helping me out. Never. At the end of the party, you know, people would have pictures taken of themselves. I'd have to drag him over to take a picture with me. So I'd have a picture of us together at this party because I thought we were friends. I don't blame myself, and I don't want... You know, I'm just trying to, you know, for the record, John Quinn, I I don't give him a pass. I think I think he's a I, I think he's a fucked up human being. I think a lot of people in theater are. I am happily not in theater anymore, and I will never be in theater again. I will never. I enjoyed acting. I enjoyed getting on stage. I don't think I wasn't a good actor. I was a I was a complete novice. I had only been in. I only a total of ten plays, and you know I had, I was not compared to this this guy. I was nothing. He had hundreds of plays, but probably hundreds anyway. I don't know. He had a lot of plays under his belt, and he was a very talented actor. Um, but that was all he was. He was an actor in life and on stage both. He doesn't really understand what it is to. Okay, maybe he does understand what it is to care. I don't know. I'm not him. But I can't imagine being him either. I cannot imagine somebody caring about me and giving of their time and their effort and their emotional whatever to me and turning around and treating them the way this man treated me. I can't even begin to imagine doing that to another human being. So I don't give him a free pass. Honestly, I could, if I never see this man again as long as I live, I will be okay with that. He wasn't what I thought he was. He wasn't, you know, I, I, I fell in love with somebody that was his persona that he put out. His, the role that he plays when he's um, shining it on, that's who I fell in love with. That wasn't a real person. That was his mask who he really was is somebody who doesn't have much of a conscience at all it has never bothered him even um, remotely that he let me think that he let me assume that we were friends that he cared um, I think what he did was a really shitty thing and thinking about it still still kind of makes me angry and hurt and feeling hurt inside you know what's really shitty isn't so much what he did but what his bartender friend did it was the bartender friend is probably the worst shit on the planet this guy who lived with me i can kind of sort of forgive because he was sick he needed somebody to take care of him you know desperate desperate situations make people do crazy things survival you know, they'll do whatever they take, whatever it takes to survive. And this man needed to survive. And I was a way for him to survive. So he used me. And I let him. 
and I ignored all the warning, all the warning going off in my head because he, I cared for him, and I wanted him to live, and I wanted to be a friend. I wanted him for my friend that bad. But the worst human I have to say I have ever encountered in my entire life was his friend. His friend. The bartender. Who watched me do this for this man. Watched me. The two years that I took care of this man in my house. He watched me do it. I'd confide to him at this bar. He saw how it drained me and made me even more depressed than I was after the marriage. After my marriage ended. He watched how it just eroded me and exhausted me and brought me to this level where I felt like I was completely unlovable and completely worthless. That's what the bartender and pre the bartender watching this guy pretend to be my friend. He knew the guy was pretending. All his friends knew the guy was pretending, that the guy was just pretending. In fact, his best friend said to him at one point, you know, you're hurting her, right? And, and his reaction was, oh no, we have an understanding. Anyway, the bartender. That's the, that's the most reprehensible human being I've ever known. And he I do not give a free pass to. He I do not forgive. Pretending to be my friend. Pretending to be my confidant. Sexually going after me. And then telling everybody behind my back that I went after him. Till I am 86 from the bar because they think I'm after this bartender. When he went after me. And not one of this man, the man who I cared for in my house. That man didn't stand up for me and say, no, Diane's not like that. None of his friends stood up for me. They, they basically said, well, you know, Diane, it takes two. Well, one of us was drunk and one of us wasn't. One of us was guilt-tripped into it by the sober one. Well, you know, Diane, I was there for you. Now, now I'm lonely because my, my wife is, is unable to give, to put out, and, and you should be there for me. Yeah, I'm saying too much. But anyway, to me, that is the most reprehensible human being on the planet. And then making me out to be the bad person. Making me out, making everybody at that bar think that I'm the kind of woman who would go after a married man. That I was a slut who would sleep around with a married man. So yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a little piece of shit that, I'm sorry, is the lowest of the low. And his friend's not standing up for me. After, I mean, to me, the whole group of them are just reprehensible. I, I don't need them in my world. I don't need to think about them anymore. I learned a lot of hard lessons. And yeah, why do I keep animals around me? Maybe that's why. I have a lot of love in my heart. I have a lot of deep feeling. I have a lot of I am a very selfish person, but I'm also a very giving person. I am the kind of person that if somebody called me in the middle of the night, even if it's somebody that I don't know, if it's one of my Uber clients because they can still call me after a ride, if it's somebody that I've given a ride to, it's a complete stranger, calls me in the middle of the night, hey, you were my Uber driver five days ago. I am in a really bad situation. I can't get a car anywhere. I'm stuck in Wenatchee and I cannot get home. I will pay you money. Can you help me? I would be there. I would go there. That's the kind of person I am. So yeah, I am a self selfish person and I can be a bitch and I can be, I can be all kinds of bad things because I'm a human being. But I'm also a lot of good things. And it was a lot of good things to both these people. I was, I was a confidant for that bartender. I was, I listened to his problems too. I was his friend. I gave him birthday presents, him and his wife, birthday presents and Christmas presents because 
I thought they were friends. I thought he was my friend. I, to me, the sweetest thing was when this bartender's children would come into the bar and he would pick them up and hold them because I didn't have a dad. And seeing him cuddle his little girls was just, it would just move me so much. I, I thought he was a good person, but he had absolutely no problem because he needed something physically and his wife wasn't putting out. No problem at all attacking and targeting somebody who was depressed, feeling like no man would ever want her. No problem at all. That man is scum. That man, if I ever come across him, I will slap him in the face. I will spit in his face. And I will hate until, I, until my, my last breath. I will hate with all my heart. Luckily, I can I don't think about it because hatred is a lot of work. Hating people is a lot of work. I I the reason I've gotten better, the reason I'm back to being creative and I'm working on my book is I have let that go. If I am expressing any emotion in this video, anger, sadness, whatever, it's because I'm thinking about it. Getting over depression is all about not feeding the monster that it, depression is. You don't feed it, it goes away. It at least it stops. You, you don't. It, it's it loses its power over you. When you feed it, it has power over you. So I don't think every day about these people. I don't think about the guy who lived with me. I don't think about the friends who didn't stand up for me, even though I took care of their friend for them. I don't think about this piece of shit bartender. I don't think about it. I keep animals because it keeps me busy. It keeps me feeling useful. It keeps me feeling needed and wanted and loved and cared for. I don't need anybody to make me feel that way anymore. I keep animals because they make me smile. And they don't have strings. They don't attach strings. And if I ever have friends in the future, I will hope hope to never be so stupid as to attach strings or expectations to any friendship ever again. People are free spirits. I also don't think I will ever really truly trust anybody again, woman or man, truly. All we have, ultimately, all we have is ourselves. That's it. People betray. People disappoint. People hurt and let you down. John Quinn is absolutely right in his estimate. His estimate. <laughs> I'm trying to think of how to say this word. His opinion of people. And there's, there are good people in this world. I exist. I'm th I think I'm pretty good for the most part. I make mistakes. That's another thing. When I make mistakes, I say I'm sorry. These people, this group of people, this both of these two, this group of friends, oh my god, they never say they're sorry. Don't, don't apologize, Diane. Don't ever apologize. That's bad. Don't ever... Really? I'm sorry, but apologizing when you hurt somebody is not bad. It's right to feel bad inside when you find out that you've hurt somebody whether or not you intended to if you find out that something you did hurt somebody else you say you're sorry because you should be sorry you should be sorry that you hurt somebody and there's absolutely nothing wrong with apologizing women well not just women but i read a statistic that women apologize too much Maybe that's true. Maybe maybe saying sorry too many times is a bad thing, but I'm sorry there are times when it's appropriate to say, oh my God, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Tim, I'm sorry I put strings on you. I'm sorry. I made you feel smothered. That's the other thing. He felt smothered because he he was stuck here in the situation with somebody who didn't he didn't care about, who cared for him. And when he started to get better, he felt smothered. And he could have left at any time. 
But that's that's the reason that he gave for not wanting anything to do with me after he got better and left. He felt smothered. I'm sorry I made you feel smothered. You know, the thing is, I'm not a professional caregiver, and I didn't know when the person is starting to get better how you're supposed to pull away, how you're supposed to stop caring quite so much. So anyway, I just, reading John's, John Quinn's um, post, I think I think human beings are difficult to be close to. I think if you can find a good friendship. I, I hear about good friendships when I'm driving. People get in my car and they tell me about a friend that they met by accident, that they've been friends for 20, 30 years, and that they raised their children together. And, you know, those kind of friendships are so amazingly rare. And that kind of friendship is so beautiful. When I hear about people who are that lucky to have a friend like that, it just makes me feel so, wow, you know, that's just so awesome. It makes me, like, want to shake them and say, do you know how lucky you are? Because there's not that many friendships like that in the world. And some people live their whole lives and never know what that's like. Because good people do exist. And people, friendships like that do exist. And if you are lucky enough to get that, find that, and have that in your life, it's like the most, you can lose everything you own. If you still have that, you have the most amazing treasure. And you are rich beyond any, any definition of the word. So, I have animals. They make me smile. They don't hurt me. And, uh, they do make my videos rather annoying when the crickets are, when I bring a fresh batch of crickets. <laughs> and I was listening to this video going, oh my god, those crickets are so annoying. I, after a while, I don't hear them because I hear them, you know, when I bring them home, it's like, oh, it's just background noise. But then when I listen to the video and I'm listening, oh my god, those crickets are just going on, just insane. <sighs> so anyway, that's just my feeling. I don't completely give this guy a pass. But I did make mistakes, too. But with the bartender, I didn't do anything wrong. The only thing I did wrong was I gave a little too much when he guilt tripped me. And I will live to regret, I, I, re, I will regret that till my dying day, because it utterly destroyed my, my reputation. I, I rather pride myself on my reputation. I don't, I don't. I'm not the kind of person that would fool around with a married man. I'm not. But that's the reputation he put on me. And I will regret ever trusting that man until my dying day. Never never trust somebody because they have a big smile or sparkly blue eyes. Don't ever trust somebody because of their superficial exterior that when they shine it on, don't trust somebody who shines it on. Don't trust what your eyes are telling you. Don't ever fall in love, love at first sight. That's what I, <laughs> don't ever, don't ever just decide you, you think you know somebody and you fall in love with what you think you know. Don't do that. Always question everything. And that doesn't just pertain to religion. So that's all. Felt like making a video after what John said. And I loved what he said. Because <laughs> I thought that so many times. Fucking A. You owe me your life. Asshole. <laughs> but oh well. Whatever. <laughs> Thanks for watching if you have. Bye. I am uh absolutely convinced that the main source of hatred in the world is religion and i think it should be re religion treated with ridicule and hatred and contempt